we would make a change in the in the program and then find out later on that that actually is having a bad social performance. There were a lot of assumptions about what our clients were that didn't turn out to be true. Microfinance institutions worldwide are helping millions of people improve their families' lives. But are their programs as effective as they could be? Are we reaching the people that we try to reach? Are we delivering the, the right services? And are people really using and benefiting from our services? Many organizations get so wrapped up in the day-to-day -day issues of are we achieving financial sustainability? How do we increase the return on assets? But they don't turn around and look and say, well, are people coming out of poverty? MFIs everywhere are discovering that effective performance management requires both a financial and social perspective. We've spent so much time in the industry on strengthening our understanding of financial performance and financial reporting. We've spent very little time on social performance. We can't just assume it's happening. You can't just assume that because people are repaying their loans, that means that you're doing great and you don't actually need to follow up and see how those people are doing or how your internal systems are working. Hundreds of MFIs have developed strategies to reach clear social goals and consider financial and social outcomes in every decision they make. Two of them share their experiences with us. My family didn't have enough food. Some days, I didn't have enough fuel to cook food. Now, I'm not lacking for anything. I am the boss of my own business. Seth. The Small Enterprise Foundation serves more than 50,000 women in rural South Africa by offering loans and facilitating savings. SEF is financially sustainable and has earned an alpha social rating by Microcredit Ratings International. SEF specifically targets the clients who live below half the poverty line. And they are women. 99% of our clients are women. For SEF, creating opportunity starts with knowing its clients. For this, it relies on its field agents or development facilitators, each of whom is responsible for around 300 women. I see myself as a leader of these women. Seth brought me here to work with you. I am Seth. One of the things they talk about is that their field staff should have a banker's brain and a social worker's heart. And that culture is part of the way of thinking of everyone in the organization. What I love more than anything is working with the women. I see her as my own daughter. I use AMK's loan, first of all, for rice planting. Second, I bought a cow. And then I bought a motorbike. The motorbike is for my son who travels to work in Samaria. AMK. Encore Microfinance Kampuchea offers loans and savings to more than 150,000 rural Cambodians. AMK has achieved operational self-sufficiency while growing 50% per year and has received alpha social and financial ratings from Microcredit Ratings International. What makes AMK different in Cambodia is our rural poverty focus. AMK goes to the areas where other organizations aren't, where people, you know, people have no other opportunities to receive loans. The challenge on our side is to be able to do that in a cost-effective way. Like SEF, AMK relies on field agents called client officers to be the human face of the organization. Even though our loans are smaller than those of other institutions, they still provide a lot of opportunities. To support its rapid growth, AMK asks each client officer to serve a large number of clients, around 600. The challenge to the client officer is to attend to so many clients' needs. In response, AMK has developed a way to give the client officers on-the-ground assistance, village bank presidents. If anyone needs a loan, I inform AMK and help people in the village to have businesses. So in a sense, we've pushed down the decision-making to the village bank present level. Not only decision-making, but the problem-solving. So our client officers are able to be much more efficient. And when they're more efficient, we're able to reach many more clients overall. With AMK, you can earn more income. 
We have earned twice as much, but we still don't have anything left, just enough for food. Yes, I'm worried. I'm worried if I become sick, no one will feed my children. Organizations that manage their social performance can respond quickly when things go wrong. One of the things that we have learned is how vulnerable rural households are to any type of crisis. You could give somebody a loan and their business could be doing very well. But all it takes is one shock, one sickness, one death, and they come crashing down very quickly. When bad things happen, what do we do about it? Is there some way we can be flexible in terms of um, loan repayment? Can we put in products that will help people deal with the problems when they happen, such as insurance? There is always a risk that a microfinance institution's policies can make its clients even more vulnerable. There's a very interesting example from AMK they did some client satisfaction surveys and got back a message from the clients that the loan sizes were too small. And they, they didn't just take that information and say, well, our clients need larger loans. They said, well, who are we hearing from? And it was the not so poor which were saying it the most. So for the very poor, they weren't complaining about the loan size. A loan is a debt. And if we give this very poor person too much debt, I mean, the, the shame is on us. So unless organizations are very careful to think about who they're listening to, they can risk this quite a common problem of adapting your services to the strongest clients and gradually drifting away from your target clients. Seth helps distressed clients in a number of ways. It encourages them to build up their savings as a cushion against hard times. I talk to them about their savings. I explain that they are not doing it for self. It is for their own benefit. If savings account records or declining value of the business indicate that a client is at risk, the development facilitator visits her more frequently. I try to learn what's wrong. I may find she's a runaway. Sometimes her husband is abusing her. I make sure the center knows about it. I try to help solve the problem. Yuyu has helped me a lot. When we give up, she encourages us. Like Seth, AMK encourages its clients to build up their savings. It also offers emergency loans of up to $100 as a buffer against setbacks. One member needed help because her children were sick. Her children and husband were infected with dengue fever. Yes, three of them, two children and a husband. I used the money to treat them. I have already paid it back. They have all recovered. I don't know where else I can get such a loan. Protection against client setbacks is critical. When clients have problems, so do MFIs. If you don't really check how your clients are doing, you'd be running a huge risk of losing a lot of clients, developing a bad reputation. You run the risk, obviously, of losing money. And a lack of focus on the social goals of microfinance can jeopardize the reputation of the industry as a whole. Already we're seeing some examples where people are saying, this organization is exploiting poor people. Many people say that the interest rate that we're charging is too high. Up to now, organizations have not been able to respond to that. All they've been able to do is to say, our, our mission is to reduce poverty and we're serving lots of people, but that's not good enough. If we can't measure the result and we can't measure exactly what it's costing us to provide the services, then we will run into big, big problems in the future. Experience shows that social and financial performance go hand in hand. It's the balance of both that makes sense. Microfinance is of no use to clients if we are not sustainable enough to stay. At the same time, it's of no use to clients if we are not able to see what they need and to provide what they need. We need strong financial performance in order to be able to raise the capital that we need so as to reach more and more and more people. The finances is the tool towards achieving the social objective. Early on, 
Seth discovered just how closely linked financial health and social well-being really are. In 1994, staff were working furiously, but the organization wasn't growing. 50% of our clients would leave after finishing a loan. Client exit is something that often you hear as a financial performance indicator. But in Seth's situation, they realize that people leave primarily because they're having problems. Every month we produce a report on our dropout rates broken down by branch and then by area so you can see basically how each staff member is performing. So it's part of the individual staff incentives, it's part of the manager's staff incentives, it's part of the performance measures for the whole organization. Now we're actually putting a greater value on the incentives. People can earn more for higher retention and it's rewarded more frequently. Managing social performance does not mean sacrificing financial performance. We don't think of social performance as a trade-off in any way. The social performance, when it's done well, makes good business sense because you know your clients better. There is substantial research which suggests that institutions of all kinds that manage their social performance in a strategic way perform better at the bottom line than those who don't. It also helps build a more transparent and accountable industry. Social performance management certainly helps focus an institution on its own performance. Yeah. But at the same time, it helps communicate its own performance and its own objectives out to a larger audience. The main investors interested in expanding microfinance are the socially responsible investors. They really want to see that the institutions they're supporting are, in fact, making a difference. I think what we're going to be seeing is more institutions taking on social performance management as a way to distinguish themselves from the competition. Managing social performance is not in itself a destination. It is the path to a more complete fulfillment of mission. One of the most valuable things that one can do is to set up systems, very simple systems, that get your staff to be thinking about social performance all the time. We have developed and facilitators sitting with clients before every loan cycle and asking clients, how's it going with your family? They really internalize their work is about improving people's lives. One step follows another. Organizations become stronger. Investors grow more confident and more clients benefit. It's really an evolving process. We've done some really good things. I think we've, we have a lot to be proud of that we've, that we've done in terms of helping people, helping large numbers of people. I'm really proud that we can reach people who are very poor and see significant changes in their lives. Yeah. I can see changes. A first-time borrower is different from one on her fourth loan. It makes me happy to see my clients improve their lives and to see their children get a more advanced education. My business is better than before. I earn three times as much. I am so thankful to have this opportunity so I can support my children. I've come a long way. I even prayed to God asking Him to add more days to my life because now life is much better.